This program is brought to you by UCKG. Before I participated in the campaign, I came out of a broken relationship. Um, I had a daughter from that relationship, um, and actually, we were married as well and divorced. So it was it was so disappointing because you think you've made it in a sense that everything was fine, and he changed. And we were happy maybe for about two, three months, and then things just started going downhill. Addiction take control of all my life. So basically just everything I, I did was to satisfy my addiction. The worst moment was when I saw that he just didn't care, and I couldn't understand. Of course, I knew there was addiction and I understood where that came from and that was causing him to behave in that way, but it didn't eradicate the fact that he was hurting this family. When she was about seven, she knew that things were not right with her dad. She knew that we weren't a family and there were times that she wanted her dad and he said he would be there and he wasn't there. And that really, really affected her because she had a very close relationship. Although he wasn't around, she always wanted her dad. I still feel really bad about my daughter and, and I promise every week, well, this week is going to be different and on Sunday I'm going to be on time. And it didn't happen. And I participated in two campaigns for my love life. One was Jacob's Well and another one was last year. And I said to God, God, I want your will to be done. I want to serve you more. I want to be complete. I want my daughter to have also a complete family. I never wanted, and I always said that when I'm legally divorced, I will not go back to John. I don't want that. So I never envisioned that I would, you know, even consider him as a, as a potential future partner. But I said to God, you promised. You said two are better than one. And I've reached a point in my life, I want to be better for you, God. So I want that person that you choose. And I, I had to change a lot of things. I was very demanding with God in what I wanted and how I wanted the blessing to come. And God showed me it's not about your will. It's about my will. But are you ready to trust? Are you ready to let go of, of your own conception of how the blessing should come to your life? When I hit the rock bottom and I had an overdose, and after that I started suffering with uh, anxiety, disorder and panic attacks. So and then I said, this is enough. I started using my faith and I decided to stop everything at once. The drugs, the nightlife and everything that I knew I was doing wrong. When you say to God, God, let your will be done, God showed me I had to move on and trust in Him. So the, as I prayed, God showed me that it was His will. And I made another sacrifice just for myself. I made another sacrifice for three months. I said, God help me because this is not what I wanted, but you know what I need. So today I can say the campaign really works. So much so that it's unbelievable the change. We're a family again. John is completely different. There's no resentment from the past. This is the difference when, when it's from God. The past is the past. And it's really, really amazing what God has done in our lives. And today, our life is completely transformed. I always wanted to come back to my family and to live with my daughter and my wife. And I never stopped loving them. Just get distracted and uh, I was blind and I am completely in love with Lisa. <laughs> it's amazing, yeah. I never felt like that before. I'm very happy now and I love you very much and I see you as a gift from God and I know that sacrifice is the, is the way forward in everything and in our lives. So yes, thank you. Oh, love you too. Thank you. <laughs> One Sunday afternoon, they were holding hands, walking together, and then this, 
they said we're together now and just everything I wanted. <laughs> May God bless all of you in the name of Jesus. Welcome to your program, Problems and Solutions. It's a pleasure to be with you. Every Wednesday, we promote to you stories of families that overcame through the power of God. You know that many people don't believe anymore in love. Many people, even they close their heart towards love because of so many disappointments and so many traumas that people are carried. And you saw this wonderful story that uh, of this family that was restored through the power of God. And the same thing that happens in those people's lives, you can happen in yours as well, because these people are not worse or better than you. What they did, they decide to come to God. Because when you decide to come to God, you are not decide to follow religious, you are not decide to follow a church, you are decided to come to Jesus. Jesus said, come to me. Didn't say to come to anyone else. Come to me, Jesus said, and I will give you rest. And if you are in need of rest, you are a person that you are feeling alone. Probably, or perhaps, I mean, you are there at home right now. You are crying because of your love life situation. Like we told before in, in, in the previous programs, how many people are in our days that they are successful in some areas, but when we talk about love, they they feel frustrated. There is a way out for you, my dear friend, because God is the only one that can restore this area. That's why every Thursday at the Universal Church, we are doing the self-reconstruction. But in a few minutes, we're going to talk more about that. If you want our help, below your screen, there is our telephone number, where you can call us, where you can text us, and we're going to continue seeing one more story of this person that overcame through the power of faith. I grew up in a very difficult household. There was a lot of arguments, confusion. My mum and dad grew up in two different religions and coming together, they had two different ideals. And I was very suffocating with these different ideas and two different outlooks on life. I witnessed a lot of violence at home due to infidelity and even financial difficulties. After some time, I just decided that I need to look for a sense of belonging. As I never found it at home, my mom is having her issues and she doesn't want to listen to what I was going through. My dad's in another part of the world and he's unreachable. So I looked for that sense of belonging outside amongst friends. The issue that I had, especially when it comes to women, my dad used to tell me something, you cannot trust any woman. I was very confused growing up because I looked at my mom and my mom was faithful to him. Mom was dedicated to him, worked two jobs in order to provide. But I used to also see the way my mom would respond when he would have an issue. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't want a woman that snaps like that. I don't want a woman that gets angry on every little thing. Of course, I was introduced to pornography at quite a young age and I began to see certain scenes in the pornography. And in my mind, I thought, okay, well, if people are doing these type of things, maybe this is what society promotes. Maybe this is the role of the woman, to be submissive in all aspects. So when I realized the opposite, I was confused. Having also seen experiences that my friends had been in, situations where I've realized that women can be very devious, it was difficult for me to put my trust in them. So having attended the church for a while, one day I was just doing something before making my way home and a very good friend of mine invited me for one of the sessions. They had the love therapy sessions. He kept pushing, he kept pushing, he kept pushing week after week. I said, okay, I got that at the time of another testimony. And the person was talking about trust and how they managed to overcome their trust issues, how they managed to see change in their relationship because they learned to trust the person. And I said, okay, maybe this relationship relationship thing can actually work. After one of the sessions, I had seen someone and a good friend of mine knew some of her friends and um, we began to speak. You know, we met up after meeting, we agreed that we both wanted to date. Whilst we were dating, we would have a few arguments here and there, but we decided to overlook these issues and still progress into marriage. In the beginning, we were very nice, happy, you know, enjoying the honeymoon. But shortly afterwards, 
some of the underlying issues began to unravel again in terms of how do we respond to problems. I would be the kind of person that I don't really like to express myself. I don't really like to express what I'm going through. I'm a very quiet person and like to remain reserved. She's the very opposite. She likes to express everything. So there was a time when she thought that I was no longer emotionally connected to her because she would express something. And for me, what is the problem? That will be enough to create an argument. You're not being understanding. You don't understand my needs. Why is it that everything that's happened in your past, you're trying to bring into the marriage? And when she will say things like this, that will annoy me because in my mind, I believe I've changed. We went and decided to speak to one of the pastors and they gave us their honest advice on what to do, which was, if you believe that there is hope in this relationship and you're able to look beyond the problems and work through it, this marriage can be a blessing. And that for us was vital, especially at that time, because at that time, if we didn't hear something like that, the relationship would not be where it is today. So I need to let go of the past and believe that something good can happen and move forward. I began to see changes and we're here today. Once we started to make the change, he understood that he needed to, you know, understand me, listening to me. And that was one of the most important thing because at first I didn't feel like I was heard. So coming from just arguments all the time to now actually seeing love in the marriage, he showed a lot of care. Ali is someone who is now mature. And Ali is someone who is, apart from being faithful to my wife, but Ali is someone who is able to convey this love to other people, to show them that apart from what they've been through, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. You can see our example. Tomorrow, Thursday is a day that we have, that we, we work on behalf of the reconstruction of families. And if you want to reconstruct your family, if you want to get rid of your problems, to be happy for once and for all, you are our guest to join us here at the Birgias Gotten 106. Our service starts at 7 p.m. and you can come a little bit earlier or after we're going to be able to talk to you. The, by, basically, oh, by the way, um, the church is open the whole day, but 7 p.m. is the therapy of love. For more information, visit our website, uckg.sc. The same way that these people found a reconstruction and today they gave their testimony, you will find and you will be reconstructed as well. Doesn't matter how is your situation. Maybe you are broken, your heart is broken in pieces. There is a way out for you. I will leave you now and tomorrow we're going to come back with another program, Problems and Solutions. But you have our number, you have our, our website also our Facebook page where you can know more about our ministry. Have a good night. This is your UCKG timetable, helping you to make a new beginning. Mondays, a meeting focused on achieving more in your financial life. Tuesdays, prayers for healing. Wednesdays, a meeting teaching you to develop in your spiritual life. Thursdays, a special prayer for the family. Friday, a service for your spiritual deliverance. Sundays, reconnect with God, the main meeting for your spiritual strength. This program is brought to you by UCKG.